live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Well, welcome back here on theCUBE. We continue our coverage here. Day one uh, at AWS reInvent 2019. We're on the show floor. You can probably see behind us, it is packed, it is exciting. Great exhibits, great keynotes this morning. Heard a lot from Andy Jassy, Justin Warren, John Walls. We're joined by Jaspreet Singh, who is the founder and CEO of Druva. Jaspreet, good to have you here on theCUBE. Thank you very much for having and, me. Uh, and Isaiah Weiner, who's a principal technologist at AWS. And Isaiah, good to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, first off, tell me a little bit about Druva uh, for folks at home who might not be familiar. Uh, and then we're going to get into your relationship with AWS and why the two of you are sitting here. But first, just a little thumbnail about Druva. Sure, as, as we all know, data is growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, and, and data management protection has been a, a big challenge for all enterprises. Druva is a SaaS platform built on AWS which helps you manage data end to end, from data center to data in the cloud to at the edge locations. A simple console to manage protection, governance, uh, management, all in a single uh, pane of glass. All right, so the two of you together, um, we were talking before the interview a little bit about maybe some of these common attributes or shared values uh, which make your partnership, I wouldn't say unique, but certainly make it work. Uh, so go over that a little bit about maybe where that synergy exists, where you see that overlap in your mission and why you think it's working so well for the two of you and your partnership. Why don't you, Jasper, why don't you jump on that and then uh, Isaiah. I think we saw a big change in the, in the enterprise landscape in 2013 when uh, I met, personally met Werner Vogel uh, back then and we, we understood that there's going to be a big change in enterprise buying when it comes to a public cloud. Uh, we felt data belongs to public cloud, the way it's growing and the way it should be managed. Uh, and we built the entire architecture around the whole notion of a centralized sort of a data lake to protect and manage data built on AWS. We thought about AWS and public cloud as a completely different operating system. And it's not just not about a, a technology change, public cloud is a business change as well, right? People want to buy an SLA across the globe at a consistent price point, right? So, to, to deliver that, you have to understand how do you build differently, operate differently, from a security point of view, cost point of view, and also sell differently. Right? Your, your go-to-market partnerships, your selling motion, procurement, all changes. So we redesigned, re-architected entire Druva experience around public cloud, and Amazon has been a great partner all throughout to build a story on top of the platform, to not just to base technology on, but our operating, mo operating model on, selling motion on, and co synergies to customer benefits on. So one of the things that uh, customers tell us is that when they come to the cloud, they want less stuff to manage. Um, and uh, it can be difficult sometimes to um, deal with a new set of primitives, you know, the way things worked in your data center, understanding locality, these sorts of things. A lot of this stuff gets abstracted uh, in the cloud. And so Druva helps sort of take away all of that and create a simple solution for customers. Um, they've been doing this for a long time, actually. You know, offering um, a, a, a you know a full SaaS solution to customers, not only who want to protect data in the cloud, uh, but also uh, you know on-prem to the cloud. Um, and uh, the way that AWS goes about, and Amazon in general goes about uh, creating things for customers, is we, we have a, what we call a working backwards process, and it, it all ties back to our, our first of 14 leadership principles: customer obsession. And so one of the things that's really nice about working with Truva is that they also uh, have a working backwards process. Uh, and so we get to do a lot of that stuff together. Um, they're also a customer, so you know, it's not just a, a partnership, they're also a customer because they operate this SaaS platform. And so um, for a, quite a long time, for example, they've been you know, one of the larger uh, DynamoDB customers. They've developed tight relationships with our service teams. Um, they, uh, uh, we, our field knows them. You know, if you ask the field, you know, name a backup provider, you know, chances are pretty good that you're going to know Druva, right? So, um, and because they're all in on AWS, it gives us an opportunity uh, to um, uh, launch things together. So when we have new storage classes in the past and new devices, new offerings, uh, Druva has been uh, a launch partner on, on multiple occasions. Yeah, I was going to ask about that, that all in on AWS. It's like, as a customer, if I'm, I'm buying some cloud service, like I, I want to buy an SLA, as, as you mentioned, Jaspreet. So do I, do I really care which cloud you've, you've picked as a customer? So the customer, you really care about an SLA for a, for a data recovery, which you, know, you, you need a guarantee across the globe, right? That's the simplest part. So in that context, they don't care. But it goes beyond that. Data and infrastructure is very connected tissue for the enterprise. 
they want the data not just to be recovered, but integrated with other services. Right? For example, Thanesis, or they have other value-add services, you want data to be part of the whole story. From that perspective, because data is so integral to their digitalization strategy, they do care about where am I, where, where am I building this new epicenter for my data management. Right? But data getting more and more fragmented, you need more centralized way to manage data. And if the most centralized way happens to be on the best uh, technology provider, which happens to have all of the services to surround the data with, you do start to care about you know, how, that, how, how that may may transform the journey of data for the customer. Yeah, but we, we know from the keynote this morning that there's, I think it's only about 3% of total spend is, is on cloud, so there's, there's room for, for cloud to grow here, but that also means that there's a lot of data that's sitting out there that isn't actually in the cloud. So a cloud-based backup service, like how do customers who already have existing on-site data, how, how should they think about this? You mentioned that they need to think about it in a different way, as, you know, change the way that you experience backup, so how, how do customers start to understand what they should be doing differently and, and how they should think about their data in a different way to start looking at something like Druva. Absolutely, so Druva's philosophy is uh, what we call three plus, three plus one, that you typically customers have uh, 3.1 backup solutions in their, in, their, in their environment. They don't accept it, but they do have multiple softwares. They always add a new one to replace an old one, but they still keep their legacy on what they need to do, right? We were in, I used to work for Veritas before Druva, and we had tons and tons of legacy being managed in Veritas, and, and, and data was always very, very hard. Right? You had to spend a lot of time to manage data all, all throughout. With Druva, our philosophy is that your next generation of workloads, your, your next generation of evolution towards cloud needs to happen on Druva. For your legacy, you can still keep the legacy softwares, IBM, Veritas, and just keep on doing what you need to do with them. Your next iteration of architectural refresh, data refresh, should happen on Druva. Right, as, as an old backup admin who's gone through that process multiple times, uh, managing tape is a nightmare. Uh, yes, I can, I can absolutely attest that that is the process that enterprise tends to go through, is like you want to pick something that you want to put all the new stuff on. Do you, do you see anyone actually bringing data from their old systems, are they migrated across, or do they just go, you know what, we'll, we'll just wait for it to die? I think a lot of people uh, do a mix of both, right? So they, they may have a cold data, which they may want to manually move to Deep Archive or Glacier. From an active data management point of view, they want to see how do, it, how, how do they change processes to impact data evolution from now on, first and, first, first and foremost, before they start to look at old archaic data, which could be brought on as well. I think with the evolution of deep archive, evolution of other services that are much cheaper than tapes, it's about time that people start to now look at older technologies and how that data may be encompassed as well. Yeah, I, I, to me this stuff is kind of hard, all right? Um, and, and that might be oversimplifying it, but, but you've got, like you said, you got, you got your warm data, you got stuff that's cold that might sit there for years and we're going to worry, you know, we're never going to worry about it again. But I have to decide what's warm and what's cold. I, if I've got legacy and I've got new, I've got to decide what I want to bring over and what I don't. And now I've got the edge, I've got IoT, I've got all this stuff, you know, exponential growth, data scale. So to me, it's, it's um, it's a confounding problem if I'm an enterprise that's already got my stuff going as opposed to if I'm totally born on the cloud, right? That's right. Th that's a, how, how do you deal with, it's easy to do it from scratch. It's a lot harder to do it when I've got, I'm bringing all this baggage with me. And, and why do I want to bring on that headache? So the one way to think about this is that, you know, where would you want to innovate, right? And you start there first, right? Um, as Andy just said this, this morning in keynote, that whenever someone tells you you have one tool to solve it all, you know they're they're probably wrong about it, right? You you solve for the best tool for the best problems. So you look at where you, where you really really want to innovate. You start there first. You bring it to cloud first, and then you slowly and steadily start to lower your workload by getting rid of legacy or by refactoring it over time. So you've been doing this for a little while, so I assume that this isn't this isn't something that only just a couple of people have, are dipping their toe in the water and trying out, Druva. You told us before that you've actually had quite a bit of success with this so far. I think uh, whenever there's an interesting problem, there's competition. So we do have uh, some new age companies coming to, to, the, to, to what we do for a living. Uh, Druva is hitting scale now. We, we announced this morning we're $100 million revenue run rate as a business. So we have, it's just not about building it, right? But as Azaya mentioned, uh, it's about operating it at scale. We, we run about six million backups a, a week, right? With more than, uh, with, with better than 0.001% efficiency 
in, in success rates, say, right? The amount of paranoia goes into security, cost optimization, DevOps, the amount of uh, hard work goes into building a go-to-market motion to buy from marketplace, to buy consumption models, is very different from, from legacy. Technology for SaaS is only the first barrier. What Amazon has done for, for the industry, which we are leading, which they are leading and we are following the example of, is how do you transform the buying behavior of customer by something radically simple than ever done before. And, and you know, Isaiah, that's been, been really a, a topic. Andy's talked about it a lot, this transformation versus transition. Yeah. It's kind of like being a little bit pregnant. You know, you, know, you got to transform yourself, right? And, and maybe it's not dipping the toe, but it's diving in that deep end. So from the AWS perspective, and from what we've been hearing Jeff Spree talk about, put it in that, in that context, if you will, about people who are, I guess, willing to make a full-fledged commitment and jump in and go, as opposed to dabbling a little bit and, and maybe being a little bit pregnant. Yeah, so, I mean, something you mentioned earlier about do people just let, let stuff rot. Yes, there is some of that, like, don't get me wrong. I talk with customers all the time and they have three different backup providers. But the fact is, is that when they go to the cloud, they look at, okay, where can I cut and run, you know? And when they look at their, uh, the things that not only um, matter in order for them to transition their operations into the cloud, but then they look at like the new rate of data creation that they've got going on in the cloud. Um, they sort of, you know, a lot of customers, they look at the old models of, of enterprise backup suites and they say, okay, I know how to operate this, but do I want to? Um, or they look at, it, you know, some of the finer things like, you know, you know, am I doing all the right things from a security perspective in all of the right connection points across all of the right pieces of software? The answer may not be yes, or maybe the answer is yes, and they look at other things like, you know, what is my RPO going to be? What is my RTO going to be? Can I abandon my AWS account because of a bad actor scenario and go to another account and do a restore without having to have infrastructure in there first? You can if it's in somebody else's infrastructure, in this case, Druva, right? So like, there's, there's, there's a hard way to do things and an easy way to do things, and Druva's done things, arguably, I would say they've done things the hard way so that customers can do things the easy way. It's probably a good way to characterize it. Um, early on, Druva decided that they didn't want to be in the infrastructure business, so they built something on top of a platform that would allow them to stop having to worry about that stuff. And if you're trying to onboard a lot of customers concurrently, then that's something that you want to scale automatically, right? You know, these kinds of things. Um, you know, when we talk to customers and customers ask us questions like, you know, uh, what are customers using uh, to, to back up in AWS? They often ask qualifying questions like, I'm in a certain region or I'm in GovCloud or I have too much data on-prem for my bandwidth capabilities and I don't really want to get into a new three-year contract because I want to shut down this data center in October. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, maybe it's September. <laughs> you know, maybe I don't have a lot of runway. Uh, and so they're looking for things like support for Snowball Edge. They're looking for things uh, like not having to, uh, uh, to worry about um, do I have to modify all of my traditional applications to take advantage of uh, other storage tiers or for my cold data, how do I get it into something like uh, Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive um, without having to really know how that works. Um, and so when these folks look at the cloud, they think AWS um, because of all of the things that AWS enables them to do without them having to have a, you know, a massive learning curve. And when it comes to data protection in the cloud, Druva's doing the same thing. Right, right. Well, the good news for Justin and, and me and Isaiah is, as Jasper said, you hit 100 million, so dinner's on you tonight. This is great. <laughs> That's right. I look, congratulations. Thank you. That is a big number. Thank and you. Uh, congrats, great success. Wish you all the best down the road, and thank you both for being with us here on theCUBE. We appreciate that. Thanks very thank much. Thank you very much. Well, back with more live here in Las Vegas. You're watching theCUBE at AWS reInvent 2019.